I'm all right. Yeah? You? All right. No, I'm good. Yeah? Just finishing getting set up. Oh? It's always a trick to get this thing angled right. You know how it is. <clears throat> yes, that's true. I have put my camera in a different spot in hopes that it won't shake when I do stuff. So it's not bouncing off the, it's not bouncing off the back of your chair or whatever you said? Yeah, it's like connected to my nightstand now. We'll see how this goes. Gotcha. Mr. J Ultra, first on, man. How are you? What's up? Mm -hmm. Changing my to, mind here. Trying to see if I can go to watch this live so I can actually see the comments on oh, it. Oh, like as it goes? Yeah. Yeah, but for some reason, I might have to just go back out and into YouTube because it's not really... Like not well, I'm glad you're here first, Mr. J Ultra. <laughs> oh, that looks great. Is this what you were last time, or have you done more to this? Um, I did a time lapse on this one of oh. the inking on it that I've done. I think I, I did penciling on it on our last live. Yes. And the inking that you see, I did on a time lapse. Oh, I must have missed that. So, well, if you were a real friend, you would never miss anything. Wow. Wow. I know. <laughs> that was, you know I don't mean that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> really feeling it make me feel bad about myself. Why don't Damn, you? Damn, right. prick. <sighs> For real. I know. I had something I was going to draw just for like a quick sketch doodle. Uh, I found another um, for one of those Instagram models that I follow because, you know, that's how it is. Um, mm -hmm. That put this great physical shot. In fact, I'll just show it to you right here on my other phone. Like, it's just a great angle on, you know, the arms, the hips, the everything. I was just like, oh, what a great figure. I wanted to do that. Oh yeah, but I'm like I, I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of in an inking mood, and I really got to get cracking on these pages because there is a deadline of lumen, and I got a lot of shit to do. So I just like let's. I think kind of like you, like you're like I have to work on these things. <laughs> I know. I have been. I have definitely been mm -hmm. procrastinating this. These are the only ones out of all the ones I did that he wanted to keep. He liked this yeah. one. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's the only that he really wanted to keep. The other ones he said he felt like, well, first off, the race was wrong, which he never told me. He kind of, maybe this is my fault, but he said he wanted it more of kind of an anime feel. So I went with an Asian like interpretation of that. <laughs> Yeah, and that was wrong. So now I have to start over. As far as he said, "Oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't give you." Uh, funny enough, I, the person he's basing his story on, I actually know her because he's wrote a book before. Um, oh, wow. and I I used to work with him way back when, and so now I'm like, oh, I gotta get this done. Yeah. It's just one of those situations where you've kind of made a commitment to it, and it's not anything that you would want to do for fun, but you've made the commitment, so you have to do it. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I get it. Oh, sorry, short. But yeah, I uh really liking the way this your stuff's turned out. Hello. Daniel Goodman. Hey, man, for anyone who pays attention, um, I did the, well, there's only like 
well, there's five of them already. Anyway, I did the I did his comic series on my YouTube channel today. Uh, that video went up, and um, oh, for real? It, it was fun. Yeah, the his books. He 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 got me connected with uh, three of his books, and uh, those videos went up today. They're very they're very different from like the X Men Superman kind of nonsense. So that was fun to get to look at something different. That's cool. You'll have to give it a give it a look. See when you have a free minute. I will. I need to get caught up on your channel. I mean, I will jokingly tell you that if you were a true friend, you wouldn't have to get caught up. But in real world, I hundred percent don't expect anybody to be. I know one guy who every time I check with him, he's like, "I am current with every one of your videos, including today's." I'm like, "Damn, Boro." <laughs> really wow i i oh yeah this is gonna sound super weird i usually watch them when i'm in the bathtub <laughs> hey well you you have to find a time where you can like this this buddy of mine who i was talking about he's got a job working like archives at mm -hmm. a uh, local college so he's got his own office sequestered away from everybody and everything and so he yeah. can kind of do or listen to anything he wants anytime. So he's like, the only difference with your stuff, Rob, is I listen to it with the headphones on because you kind of got a potty mouth. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's 100% fair. 100% fair. That's, you know, it's a fair point. He's not, he's not wrong. But that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. He's always caught up. Yeah. So. Dan good when he's saying, uh, hey, thanks for the event today, Rob. We we know how hard it is to get eyes on your work, so I really appreciate it. I've felt like the king of the world today. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've got just this little, I've got a little bit of a reach with my channel, which I appreciate. But I'm serious when I say, like, I've got a little bit of an audience, and it means the world to me to be able to show someone else's stuff because I would want that. I would want somebody to, like, like, hey, any chance you'd want to look at my stuff? And if you put it out there and show it, maybe it'll put some eyes your direction. Like, yeah, I I love doing it because it's it's I was saying in the video, I've said this before, like it's kind of like a little joy of like a unexpected joy to get to have the opportunity to see different stuff and be able to push it out there a little bit. And of course, all the videos I do that get the most views are like the popular pop culture stuff. So, you know, but the more subscribers I get, the more random people get to look at it, even if they're in the smaller views, you know what I mean? It only gets two or 300 versus 2000 or something like that. But right. It, it's fun. And I actually really love to do it. It's, it's, it, it feels like it's, I don't know how else to word it, but like a silly little like honor to be able to have that opportunity, you know, if that makes sense. Makes sense to me. Yeah. And my I, my subscriber count has been growing. Like I've had like like a hundred plus this month, which is oh for real. Lot, yeah, it's just been growing by like twenty a day or something. Oh, wow. It's or yeah, it's 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 just I don't know. It's weird how it just kind of just keeps going and going. I mean, I feel like part of that is the more people who watch, the more traction your video gets. And then the more people find it, they're like, oh, hey, what's this? You know, I know that I get suggestions for stuff I haven't looked up, but because it's like, oh, this person had, you know, 300 people watching or who's liked this video. It's kind of related yeah. to what you're looking at then it'll come up, you know? Yeah. And you know, I think the consistency of doing one a day That's, and you do a lot. I, well, Mr. Dan Goodwin, I mean, I I'm, I'm always nervous that I'm going to like not get it right or say something wrong or offend somebody or something like that. I don't know, but I, you know, I, it means the world to me that, you know, you've, you appreciated it. And, um, that you know it helps put some eyes on your stuff and i was legit legitimate when i was talking about the stuff in the video 
where the the stuff you put in the book that made me laugh, like there was some legitimately funny stuff. Like I think humor is hard. I, 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 I don't know how to like write funny things, you know? Um, so to be able to like come up with a gag or something funny and put it into a book and have it work. Um, I think that's really fun. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. So Jessica, without spoiling anything, you like that idea I floated to you last night, right? About the the book. Oh yeah, yeah, I loved it. The character stuff, the way you responded with your text, with the <laughs> the space <laughs> in between the words, I literally laughed out loud. I'm like, oh, I, I guess. All right, she it likes the idea. So that... to me at the moment, but I was like, oh my yeah. gosh, that's a great idea. <laughs> And I wasn't sure where you were going to go, okay, I, without saying too much either. I feel like you've already kind of caused me some sadness with this book. I was like, oh, geez, what's he going to do now? Like, What is he going to do to the story this time? Yeah, what's this new tragic, you know, I don't know. Right. Anyway, so when you said... What you said, I was like, "Oh, right." Actually, that ass. <laughs> it's like there's a ray of light. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Wait a second, I really like that." <laughs> well, I'm glad to have someone to bounce these ideas off of who know what kind of what's coming and what's going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I like that. It's kind of. I was just sitting around, just want my mind just wandering aimlessly. And it just kind of occurred to me, what if I did this? And I was like, oh, that might be really interesting. Yeah, Maybe. I really liked it a lot myself. All right. I'm not 100% committed to it, but I'm like 99% committed to it. I just have to work out some details in my head. And until it's actually drawn and done, it's always like, uh, We'll see, but um, I, I don't think I'm backing out. I can't back out of the idea. Yeah. No, it's a good one. I like it. And similarly, like having that guy last night um, that was going over my books that we both kind of sat on, that was yeah. fun. That was really cool. Yeah, just to hear some guys just like, I got his books and he's... I, I didn't ask him to do anything. He just chose to show him on his little podcast show there. And he was just loving it. So I'm like, that made me feel like, like Dan Goodwin was saying, he's like, I feel like the king of the world. I'm like, that's how I was feeling. Just to have somebody had just got my books. He read them and he loved them. And he went over page by page, just talking about how much he enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, he definitely did. <laughs> that was great. I was. Yeah. Having a good chuckle. Good <laughs> I was laughing so hard when he's like, should have done, he should have done the Netflix show. Like, <laughs> and he's like, he wow. he's like, yeah, none of this, you know, lesbian and She Ra stuff, or not She Ra. Um, <laughs> he's like, Heeman's banging Tila in his. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Hard. I was like, oh my gosh. Great. Truth. <laughs> Hello, someone saying. Hey, hey. Got kind of a big chunk of the regulars so far. Yep. Courtney yeah. said she was going to try to show up. Did you guys end up doing one the other day? No, I did hit her up on that day, and um, she said she wasn't able to make it. So then I was just gonna do one on my own. But then I just decided to do the to film a time lapse. Oh, okay, yeah. Sorry about that. I completely spaced my time earlier that his birthday was that day, <laughs> so and your husband's birthday. <sighs> okay, but to be fair, I threw him a surprise birthday party earlier. 
this month. So it wasn't like, but I knew that he <laughs> probably wanted to do like a, a family celebration. I wasn't sure what all he yeah. and I just, so I was like, oh, I hate to say like for sure and then commit to it and have it be a thing. And no, it's hundred percent fine. I, I really, you know, it was, You know what I'm not liking the most out of this? What's that? It's drawing a bunch of kids, first off. I don't like drawing kids. Oh, puke. <laughs> oh, thanks, someone's name. Um, I hate drawing kids' figures. <laughs> okay? I hate it. I hate it. And then <laughs> I have to come up with different clothing. Because they're all in winter coats and hats and stuff. Yeah. It's not just figure drawing. It's like fashion design, too. Like, you have to, if you want to make it interesting, you have to, like, come up with, what are they wearing, you know? Right. And it's all 100% up to me what they're wearing, I guess. Yeah. So I'm like, uh. Well, back in the... In the late 90s, early 2000s, there was a book called Gen 13 that was hyper popular with this really good artist who had this really kind of cartoony, fun style. But he was drawing a book of teenagers, like modern day teenagers. And he said in an interview, like he had to go to the store and buy like teen girl magazines to see what the latest fashions were so he could reference it in the book. And he's like, I felt a little awkward. Because people are like, why are you buying her? <laughs> but there's no Google search at that time. Right. See. So you just had to do what you had to do. <laughs> I think I can. I think I can come up with ideas for their clothing and stuff. Sorry if you can hear my kid screaming. He has been. My youngest has been. Less than ideal all day long. <laughs> <clears throat> Am I seeing South Park? Oh my goodness. Um, I guess kind of. This is this is an illustration I'm doing for my friend's book. He commissioned he's a friend of mine and I haven't really talked to him in a long time. But he um, he writes different books and stuff, and this is a kind of a kid story, and it is a kid story, and it's about children. And so he asked me to illustrate this short story for him, and so I'm trying to I'm trying to do that, <laughs> basically. And get the, like, poses and stuff that he wanted. They're pushing her down a hill here at this point. So, trying to make that happen. I mean, honestly, the stuff that you're drawing is difficult. The stuff I'm drawing, I feel like it's simple. If I were to be drawing what you're trying to do, I would be struggling too. Because it's human proportions. It's not little children or adults or muscular men or hot girls. It's, you know what I mean? I know. Um, I feel like this was like a group it, of hot girls. It would be easier. So what you're doing is difficult. I'm just drawing muscular guys bent over in ridiculous bullshit poses. Technically this is. Mm, I still think it's difficult though. I mean, there's no way. Well, I, can that. I mean, but for me, if I were to be doing it and I were to try to draw the same thing, I wouldn't be. It's easier, in my opinion, to just draw muscular figures than it is to draw teenagers in human, regular, you know, everyday clothes. That's a trick. Yeah, it's, that's fair. I definitely, this has been a huge challenge for me. Yeah. I think that's why he was like, oh, she looks too old. But to be fair, I used my own. I saw a cap and my brain went straight to South. No, honestly. I get it. It looks oh, that's funny. Like, now I see the South Park. I see the snow cap. Sorry. Yeah, it looks kind of it it almost looks like to me if someone were trying to do a more like um 
less cartoony version of South Park. Yes, that's what it would look like. Yeah, that's uh, funny. So, yeah, totally makes sense. But um, I will say, I do feel like, um, you know, I used my daughter, my eldest daughter, as a reference. And she's pretty tall. Um, I think she's five foot two now. And she's taller than me. Um, and she's not 12. Or she's 12. She's 12. And so I think it was just a little taller than he wanted. Because the kids are about supposed to be 11, 12, that age group. Yeah. A lot of times with kids, you have to push it into the cartoony almost to make it read the way you want it to. Yeah. It's true. It does feel that way a little bit. It does feel that way. But at least I'm doing something with it. As opposed to having it sitting there going, I'm going to get to that eventually. Oh, I know. I just, maybe if I start, I'll have some motivation to. Yeah. I find that sometimes once I get started, I just find a way to, I just, you find a way to make it work and then you can kind of get lost in the art and it just works. Or other times it's just, you just have to power through it. Like just get it done. Just I'm going to make this one sitting session of drawing. Just I'm going to suffer through it and just get it done so I can move on. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Mm -hmm. How many pages are you into this book? I mean, I think you saw I penciled in blue that I showed like I had four pages i haven't drawn anymore but i've done the layouts on you know, on thumbnail scale for some more and just the inking i right. i have a after next week like i have i work my regular schedule next week and then after that i'm off work for nine days so i'm going to push hard to get a lot of drawing done i i want to make a big push you remember there was a stretch when I was basically doing a page a day when I was trying to show up my stupid brother, who's like, you won't get that book done. Yeah. I do remember this. And I, I showed him up, didn't I? <laughs> you did indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed he do. <laughs> but I got to get back into that mindset. <laughs> the, the problem is, is that when I get done with the book, it's like such a endurance thing and you get finished, you know, um, and then you're like, I, I need to stop for a minute and take a breather. But then to get going again, like to get back up on that horse and just keep going, it, for me, it usually takes a minute to just get back into the swing of it. Yeah. Um, I do. Or go ahead. Yeah, I can see that. I, I, I don't know how you, you do them as fast as you do them, to be honest with you. I'm a lot older than you, and I've got a lot more free time than you, so I've been doing it longer. You've got, like, family obligations all over the place. I'm like, well, I'm just a single dumbass loser, so I'll just sit oh home and draw. Oh, my gosh. Why would you say that about yourself? I don't want to hear that shit ever again. <laughs> oh, you make me feel good about myself by berating me and making me feel like I'm a bad person. <laughs> I mean, seriously, though. Come on, man. You're not a loser or whatever it is that you well, said about yourself. I don't even remember. Whatever you said. I've already <laughs> blocked it out of my head. Yeah, mind. blocked that shit out of my head already. Right. I have some interesting-ish news for the channel for any of my fellow comic book um, reading people out there. I've made like two different connections recently from professional artists from old school image comics that are, there's the potential to have like an interview with them. And one of them is going to send me some 
scans of the original artwork of a book I've already um, filmed the video on, but I haven't released. After I filmed the video, I went and looked them up because I didn't, I haven't heard from this artist in ever since oh. the mid nineties. So I looked him up and he's still drawing. He's just off doing like storyboarding and working in like movies and stuff like that. So I sent him a friend request on Instagram and it, and it turned into like a brief chat. And he's like, Hey, if you want, I can send you some scans of the original artwork for that book. If you haven't edited the video together yet, I'm like, holy shit would you please and like just have like a connection to you know one of the artists that i'm reviewing and then i threw out the idea i'm like i don't mean to be present presumptuous but is there any chance you'd be up for like a like a live video interview i've done like two of them and he's like i can't commit to it right now but he's open to the idea when the timing is right so i'm like holy shit and then just yesterday another guy an old school artist who did some work for like, if you watch my videos, you heard me talk about Jim Lee, um, his studio, one of the artists that did inking for his books. I asked him if he'd be willing to uh, do like an interview with me. And he's like, anytime you let me know, we'll do it. I'm like, holy shit. Wow, really? Just like so, that? Just like, I mean, I felt kind of dumb, like I'm a nobody, but yeah, you know, why not just ask what's the worst they could do? They could be like, nah, no thanks. So what does it hurt? You know? Yeah. Um, and so it's, I've, I've started moving just a little bit in the direction of having the opportunity to like talk to some professional artists that did some of the work on books that I've found to be some of my favorites. I'm like, holy shit. Like, it's a big deal. <laughs> I'm not going to say their names yet until I, you know, but um, for anybody fans of like the old school image comics, you will know these guys works. So not me. So <laughs> no, you, <would. laughs> you never know that I could have heard them from you. <laughs> These ones, I would say you, I, I would never have mentioned to you yet. So. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, they had tons of artists working because you got guys doing penciling and then inking and coloring and lettering and a whole assembly line of people doing stuff. And these guys, one of them in particular, was a really big name for a minute, and he did a book that everyone who read comics in the '90s was like, "I remember this book," and. Um, like where did he go you know and he just went off to he he told me on our instagram chats he's like it's hard to make consistent money in comic books especially these days so doing like storyboarding work and stuff like that for movies is a lot easier and a lot more that pays a lot better so oh, oh. but he also said he's working on a new book that's going to be published by image comics and um, he's just got to get it done. And it's just it's still a little ways out from being completed. So just a fun little bit of, you know. Yeah. Daniel Goodwin, I wish it was him. Um, I really, really do. But no. Good, good guess. But um, I wish. Not to say the ones that I've got lined up are like worse or not as good, but um Richard Friend is a inker that's never stopped working in the industry. And um, these guys kind of did. But for a minute, they were working on some big books. Well, that'll be neat. When that, uh, I, it's kind of exciting. It's just like, <laughs> what the hell? How'd this happen? So exciting. It is exciting. Look at you. Don't forget us little people when you get up there to the top. Yeah, I've already forgot. Who are you? Ah, uh, you motherfucker. You mother... You like calling me that. <laughs> when I do something good, I'm a motherfucker. When I do something bad, I'm a motherfucker. Just who you are. That's what I can say. <laughs> Just who you are. Uh, don't, that really, don't ever change. I really like this face down in the corner here. This one? Yeah. This look, right? I I guess it's right side. <laughs> yeah, it looks really, really good. I was having fun. Um, uh, yeah, when I was penciling it, it just come along really well. So I was really excited to ink it. 
Yeah. It looks great. Daniel Goodman, you asked Stroman to do the back cover of one of the issues, but you never heard back from him. I mean, hell, dude. Um, okay, yeah. Um, you talk about this artist, Larry Stroman. That would have been a hell of a get, man, if uh, Larry Stroman would have been willing to do that for you, man. That would have been awesome. But um, I suspect he's like, what, what are you going to pay me, bro? I did. And, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. He's fine. What were you gonna say? I forgot. <laughs> you go, for ladies first. I was gonna say I thought it was really cool last night too, when he was talking about your book, um, and he brought in one of his buddies who was on voice chat with him, and he was like, "This guy talking about you is so good. He should be doing, you know." um his own stuff but then he's also like man i would like get behind funding one of the one of his like you know <clears throat> um books right so i've been thinking a lot about that actually from that conversation and just kind of on my own yeah if by the time i'm done with book 6 of this he-man thing when it's done and i move on to my own thing i mean it's going to be a year for this He-Man book to get done. And then if I draw another one, you know, when I spin it off into my own thing, like I've talked about, that could be another year. But by the time I get it done, if the way my channel's been going, if I grow and I've had an, I get enough of an audience, I've, I'm really, for the first time, really considering trying to do like a Kickstarter to see about get it, because I'll be able to publish my own thing. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's on my mind for sure. Like I can see a, a situation coming up because I've got to have an audience. That's the thing. And I'm suddenly I've kind of got one. I mean, I would definitely chip in too. You better. I'll punch you in the okay. face. You know what? <laughs> I knew you were going to say take... that. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to go to violence. I knew you were going to say something like that. Right. Um, just because I think that it would be, I do agree that I've thought this about you though. To be fair, I feel like I've been one of the ones that's thought this about you for like 13 years. <laughs> so, to be fair, I remember just thinking, like, why are you working here <laughs> when I saw your art and we worked together? Yeah. I was like, uh, you should be working on. That's animation studio but again, but again you got to have an audience and you know if you're going to crowdfund you got to have people have some reason to look at you and know you um i've done those videos on that buddy of mine isaac bell and his metal shade comic do you remember yeah me talking oh, about those? I, follow, I still follow him his stuff's are yeah really good and doesn't his girlfriend or wife do art it's, it's just his girlfriend. She's an incredible artist. And he, so they write the books together. He draws them. She colors them. Yeah. And then she does. Like, that's like the most perfect situation in the world in my life, my eyes. Yes. Because he's like, he's a charismatic, good looking dude. And his girlfriend is this super hot babe. And she mm -hmm. does art. And so they work together on this comic series. And they've just funded four completely wildly successful Kickstarters. I'm like, he's literally living the fantasy life I want. I'm not going to lie. That's, it also makes me a little jealous. No, I mean, I love my husband. Right? He's, he's, you know, he's not at all into art or anything like that. Yeah. You know, my, my life, my existence doesn't have to be perfect to have a significant other who likes art. Like it doesn't have to be that way. I was married and my wife at the time, she didn't do artwork. She appreciated it until I kind of ruined that for her. But, um, you know, but she appreciated. But the idea of having that significant other that likes it and does it and you work together for the same goal. Like, holy shit. Like, exactly. it's, like, man, that sounds great. You know, to have somebody that likes to do the same thing and you make a living at it. So, but he's earned it. What I was getting at, my point I was going to get at is that he built up his audience. He spent a, he spent several years just 
online, backing crowdfundings of other people, posting everywhere. And he was nervous when he put out his first Kickstarter like four years ago, three years ago, whatever it was. He had a goal of $5,000 and he is messaging me. He's like, dude, I don't think I'm going to make it. I'm, I'm nervous as shit. And they had made their goal in 15 minutes and ended at $32,000. Oh, I remember this story. I think you were telling me this. Yeah, because he put in the work to build up his audience and then you crowdfund. So all, right. all that being said, I feel kind of, I feel kind of like a, chucklehead saying this but like i'm kind of getting a little bit of an audience and so maybe there will be that opportunity for myself right no that does make sense i get worried i do i get it It makes sense to me And then, like you said, I'll remember the little people like you. You won't. When I'm <laughs> You're no, I need, I need you because I can bounce ideas off you. You can tell me. You'll give me honest feedback. And um, you're part of the creative process. You're basically the second host of this channel, really. Like these lives, are, it doesn't feel right unless you're here. You know what I mean? Aww. So. All right, you're not always a motherfucker. <laughs> well, hold on, maybe I want to be that motherfucker. <laughs> I want to be that. I like that title. <laughs> I knew you did. Son of a bitch. Oh. You know, when I first penciled this figure, I thought I was kind of liking it. But then when I finished penciling it, I thought I kind of screwed it up. But now that I've inked it, I think I'm back to liking it again. It's really good. I like it a lot. You did a really good job of showing the depth. When his hand's coming forward, you made it the correct yeah. size. As his arm goes back, shoulders are correct. Everything just looks very muscly. It looks yeah, good. Yeah, I'm going for big, thick. I want to look like a vicious monster because he's got a big role to play in this book. He's going to fuck some shit up he really is so i'm excited but it's all the way at the end of this book which is 130 pages away so i got my work cut out for it. wow yeah i might, I might leave this one kind of where it's at and kind of finish up i will say this i'm starting to see how where i can't do detail work very easily with the blue pencils. With the pencils. <laughs> I was talking about that last time, right? Wasn't I? Where, like, yeah, I was like, oh, I have a problem. It, it blunts it itself, to get that fine detail, but yeah, as as I'm sitting here trying to trying to get like face details and even clip clothes and stuff and like hands, I'm like, mm, I might. Uh, I might uh, have to switch. Yeah. But part of me is just trying to get some stuff on paper. I don't know if I want to go too detailed and tell them, like, hey, does this look okay? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I got to think. Well, I think it's looking good. I mean, it. It looks good. We'll see. I don't want to hear that shit come out of your mouth ever again. All right. Now you're now you going to tell me what to do? I am. Um, They are For real. Soft. I feel like the pencils, the blue pencils are softer than what I would use if I was using just a regular sketch pencil. Do you yeah. agree with that? Yes. Like, if I were using a sketch pencil, I would use one that was actually pretty light, but it's not soft at all, like, in age. You talk about regular pencil leads that you would use? Yeah. I was, uh, yeah. Someone's saying, asked if the blue pencils were soft. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, they are. And I don't like when I use regular lead pencils, I myself hate soft lead pencils. I use a six H pencil, which is way in the hard range, but yeah. I'm so used to it. And you have to kind of draw a light because it's so hard. Like if you try to make a dark line, you'll like gouge little craters into your paper. So it forces me to draw light, but then I, it's not dark and it's not smudging everywhere. So that's what I liked about the hard leads, but that blue pencil, for whatever reason, it's soft, but it it's all I draw with anymore when I'm penciling. I, I don't even use my regular pencils at all. Yeah. I like them. I do. I like how it appears on the paper for sure. Um, but I feel like I'm going to have to use a regular pencil to get some of this stuff detailed in and I have to figure out how okay here I am again at this stupid clothes I don't want them all wearing boots like her it's snowy she's wearing you know boots because it's snowy and like I'm trying to keep her outfit the same you know as this this happens right after she's crying in the snow but I want some of them to wear tennis shoes you know maybe something different because they're not all going to be wearing snow boots, right? Like that would look stupid. <laughs> I don't know in my head. It depends on how bad. I mean, there was a time when I was a kid, everyone wore snow boots when you were yeah. younger and in that shitty weather. So it's not like it's unbelievable. All right. Well, maybe, maybe I will then. That being said, you do have a client you have to make happy. So I don't know that he would care about that. I don't know what he'll care about. <laughs> so. like, I, I, I. I got no way. He says, use your artistic, you know, just do whatever you feel you're inspired to do. And I'm like, okay, but I did that last time. <laughs> and then you shut me down. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't go so well. So now I'm. I need some direction. <laughs> yeah, now I'm going to have to ask that, uh, you know, he can be a little bit more here. Yeah. Here. Oh, man. I don't know why I'm yawning. It's not even that late. But... Why haven't you been kind of sick recently, too? Actually, I haven't really been sick recently. <laughs> I don't have a good excuse. Well, I thought you said you had that uh, you were feeling sick the other like other morning or something like that oh probably just morning sickness stuff doesn't morning i thought morning sickness was only like at the beginning ish of the pregnancy or am i just completely off my rocker i have hyperemesis galvaderum with all of my pregnancies and what that means is the hormone that makes you all sick and pregnant and all that stuff never dies down so i remain oh. the whole thing you're just a lucky girl yeah yep yeah i think i'm just gonna sketch this out and sketch a couple of them out and see if he even likes because i've done this a couple of times we've gone through because daniel goodwin's ass saying i would show thumbnails to the client before committing to the drawing and I've now we've gone through about 10 different drawings and he's finally, I think, given me a fairly good idea of what he's looking for. Um, but I don't want to do too much detail on this and get all of their clothes down and, all, and draw all the hands because you all know I hate drawing hands. Um, right. <laughs> until I see him say, like, yes, these faces look fine for kids. This is a kid's story. It's cartoony enough because he kind of wants it a little cartoony. But then he also wants it, you know, you know, inked and, and well done. So I'm like, I got, I think, a good idea now, but I'm just not going to go through all the process of doing the shading and all that first and see first if this is even something that he would yeah you know 
Just double check in. And if he hates this, I'm just giving up. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, light everything on fire. Give him some money back. And... <laughs> he hasn't paid me anything. Oh, well then, demand money for the time you put in. <laughs> he said, I, I told him he could pay me when I got them done. And then I would just tell him how much it was. But we'll see how it goes. I did his... Um, Mark, sorry, I'm just... Uh, hey, Mark, thanks for joining in. Sorry, Jess, you were saying? Oh, no, no. I'm like uh, reading it too. Oh. Um, oh, I was just saying, I did his uh, emblem that he uses for his company uh, way back Oh, when. really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So that's why he came to be, I guess, all these years later. Mm -hmm. He's like, you're the one artist I know. That's probably true. <laughs> I gotta look at him in reverse, see if it still looks okay, and I think it does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got control around. Oh. I put my computer what is on. Punching this girl in the face? He's shoving her. Okay. But yeah, they shove her. Sorry, I'm like shaking my camera after I said I wasn't going to do that this time. Um, I guess they shove her down a snowbank. I thought about trying to do some comic book art because that's what someone said that like you should actually do some comic book art one of these times oh yeah I remember. yeah but then i well you kind of are in a way it's storytelling through pictures what you're doing so it's you know not stuff you would choose to do but it's still kind of that yeah that's fair that's fair i guess you're like that doesn't make it any easier rob <laughs> exactly Yes, I am drawing commission because I've been lazy and I haven't done it. So I knew I'd be forced to do it if we were on a live. Yeah. And there's always the, there's a little bit of a clock ticking for you too. Yeah, and it has to be done by Thanksgiving, so. Yeah. Which for me feels like tomorrow. <laughs> He's saying, but now you're drawing in front of everyone, so haha, -ha, way to pile the stress on. That's true. Why that's fair. That's fair. Don't, don't think about the fact that people are watching. We've been over that. <laughs> like if I think about it, like if all these eight people that are watching were standing right behind me over my shoulder watching, I just I I, I can't. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. It's true. Is my husband vacuuming? Oh my god. Oh my lord Jesus help me. That has hell frozen over. <laughs> is that what that is? I'm kind of just a little bit surprised, yeah. It butts up against our nature to want to pick up a vacuum. Yeah, I'm a little bit. <laughs> these more often right happy wife happy life I suppose <laughs> like I guess all right time to start Ooh, throwing some deep this next one huh 
Well, I, I the only other thing I have to do on that other page I was look I was doing it is basically a bunch of filling in the blacks on the background, and that's boring. So I got this scene of this giant monster creature punching at He Man, and so there's a bunch of rocks and rubble and debris kicking up. And you have to draw this rubble and debris first to give it a sense of three-dimensionality. Like if I start inking the figure, but then you can't put rocks in front of them. So I got to like start drawing a bunch of rocks. Rock I can do that. that. I don't know. You've done a lot of work already on these pages. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's still looking. You're talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's just the same four pages. It's just, I don't know. It's, I just, I want to be like 20 pages into this book already. And I'm still on, you know, the first four But that's okay. I'm getting there. I know, but I mean, you just started not that long ago. Well, like I said, for better or worse, I've kind of developed a pattern of working fast. Um, I don't know. <clears throat> it's kind of nice. So. You can work fast. Yeah. Oh, hey Dan, if you're if you're talking about my page here, um, yeah, I got giant monster guy smashing down on He Man. Like he's got his fist balled up in the back here, and then he slams it down, crushing him. But then He Man's like pushing his hand away, and then he got a big close up shot of his face, just like labored, intense anger. He's gonna start pummeling the shit out of this giant rock monster. So. Building up the action here, but I was talking about this last time. Getting these shots of this size size difference, you know, having giant monster versus small guy, it's tricky. It's kind of a pain in the ass. I like the space at the bottom too. This big one here? Um, yes. That yeah, one. I'm kind of excited that one. I'm, I'm going for it. I'm, I'm going to contradict myself. I, there's a specific Rob Liefeld drawing that he did <gasps> of an angry, grunty face oh. with this anger. And I'm like, I want to capture that exact same kind of intensity. Like, I know I shit on him all the time, but he does do some things well, even if it's there's supposed to be 20 things an artist does well, and he can only do two. The two things he does well, he does really well. So I want to capture that same kind of intensity. I don't even that... want to hear you talk <laughs> to him ever again. If that makes me a little bit of a hypocrite, I guess I can't deny it. It does. It does. <laughs> Tell me what you really think, my friend. Oh, I will. And it makes you a hypocrite. <laughs> it makes you a hypocrite. Just kidding. At least you can admit there's some things he does well. Oh, I keep forgetting I was going to get that box out of the... You mean the magical mystery box of comics that you don't know what's in it in the garage in the overhead, and you my keep husband talking about said it? that there are comic books and DVDs and in, in the two bins out there. That's what he said, and I should go out and get them just to see. You should, or you should send him so your very pregnant ass doesn't climb up on a ladder and fall down and get hurt. <sighs> That's true. That's what I. That should being do. said, you want to know what's in this mystery box of comics that. I yeah. have, I'm having such a, like a problem because I worry that I shouldn't be in it because it's not 
technically you can, property. You can look with your eyes. Look with your eyes. Is that what you said? Just you're not taking them. You're just looking at them. <laughs> That is awesome. <laughs> Look with your eyes. Just oh. go see for God's sakes. I want to know. That, I don't know why that made me laugh so hard, but it really, that really cracked me up. Oh, geez, I've, I've missed several things here. Hold on. Wiley J draws. I've redrawn my first issue four times, and now I'm drawing issue two for the second time. Dude, I get it. Yeah, yeah. The the, uh, the need to redraw. Um, Mark is saying it's not how well you can draw. It's how well you can draw fast, at least when it comes to comics interior work. Yes, um, they will. Com major comic publishers, all the big artists will say all the time, if you're a mediocre artist, but you can meet a deadline, they'll hire you often ahead of the better artists who can't hit the deadline because they're just selling a product they need it to sell and they got a they've got time allocated to a, a printer and if you don't have the book ready to go to the printer you get charged and so you know speed is an absolute factor unless you become a big big name then they're willing to wait for you to finish and then solicit the book that's fair I get. <laughs> this fable comic stash is like the <laughs> It's out there. I guess. Though to be fair, I will say I have not personally seen or opened it. But now it's up in the rafters of my garage. So it's not like super accessible. So I see it up there. <sighs> I have it's And just... yet you you have this awesome husband who I'm sure if you're like, honey, if you go get this box of comics down, I will, and then fill in the blank. I bet it would be down in the next five minutes. Did you just say fill in the blank? Oh, yes. Just and whatever you want to throw out there that he might be interested in. Nice dinner. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Yeah. See, I'm just saying. Okay. And I'm not saying this selfishly for myself because I'm really curious if there's something awesome in it. But if I find something awesome, what do I, like, here's the thing. It's a bin. So I'm going to have to touch things and go through it. That's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Just do it. This would have been done day one. I moved in there. I'm like, what's up there? So I'm like, it's a box of comics. I'm like, shut up. Everyone get out of my way. Fuck off. I, I got a box of comics to look through. Oh my and you God. can look through them and then you can put them right back. I guarantee you they don't know like there's a specific order they were put in or some shit. Like they're out of order. I don't know that they even, I'll be honest with you. They, I think they're an older couple. I don't think they live in state. And honestly, they've got that, that other bin out there, some other random stuff. And then they have this massive, here's another mysterious thing that's out there that I want to just see what it is it's like no joke probably a six by six foot by four foot canvas wrapped completely and it's stapled with a tarp oh yeah you told me about that i'm like why are you not looking at this stuff right you're a good person i, I mean some that's like packaged up i think i can understand that a little bit more than just a bin you can pop the lid open and just look but then i also want to see like i what the the guy from the management company were like what is this canvas thing and he's like i don't know a giant nude <laughs> i'm like what if it is and that's why it's stable <laughs> i know i should get it do an unboxing video oh maybe i'll do it for our next live Jessica, you can't back out of it now. You've said it. You've committed to it. But here's the problem. What if it's, I opened it and my husband was wrong and it's not comic books. What if it's like box of pornography? <clears throat> what if he doesn't, yeah, he just like lands and it's actually just, you know, penthouse Either way, playboy. Good content. <laughs> Either way. Hilarious. It's good content. Oh, this is a brilliant idea, Jessica. 
I don't want to have to threaten you with like not allowing you on a live ever again until you have this thing, but. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> like, oh, it's going to that level now. It does seem to be, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Okay. We're doing it. I'll get, I'll have it brought down for this. See, um, yeah, Daniel's like, unboxing vid. Mark is like, dude, that's a great video. Wiley J. John says, a bin full of Turok number one. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. That's hilarious. Because that's like a famously shit comic. As, as far as my understanding, but it's like, it's something that no one wants to copy of and watch it be full of nothing but that. <laughs> yeah, I like uh, it. They loved it. <laughs> all right, Jess. You kind of committed yourself a little bit. So... Yeah. You can either live stream it while you like literally have your husband pull it out of the overhead or you can just have it on hand and then <laughs> set up your camera just to point at the at the bin and then pop it open and we can watch. <laughs> okay. And maybe it unleashes a plague of death or something on you and we all, you know, it's it's like a horror movie and this is the start of something terrible, but Okay. You know, either way. Just, either way. Either way, good content. I, get, I bet I get subscribers before the world ends. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's so funny! All right, we'll do it. I'll All do right. it. Right. When when All we right. get back to live? I mean, we've got our normal like we usually do them on Thursdays. Right. If that's a if that's a thing for you, and I'm I could announce it. Like random creative comics opening, so if I put it out there to get to bring in people to watch, and you don't, you don't show up. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is gonna be the greatest <laughs> thing. I really hope we have to suck really for our content. Porn. I do hope that it's porn. <laughs> mm, that'd be hilarious. Someone saying, I call dibs on any savage sort of Conan or Conan Saga magazines. That's a fair, that's fair. If there's a puzzle box inside, do not open, right? <laughs> all Turok number ones would be bad. Hard to think of what would be worse. A box full of all the death mates. Maybe there could be more death mates and it'd be like the one that I ripped up on camera with my brother and we'll do it again. You ripped, I didn't even see that. Jessica, I'll send you the link because we, we got this book. And we were just going on about how terrible it was. And me and my brother, we proceeded to literally rip it to shreds on camera. And it was one of the funniest things we ever did, we thought. I can't believe you didn't see that one. I don't think I saw that one. I know that I... Again, I put out a lot of videos, I know. I just don't recall it. You would remember. Yeah, that's fair. So my kids, my kids watch those videos of people getting bad Pokemon cards. And they just rip them. Or they do the rip <laughs> they don't know which card it is and they decide if they're going to rip it or keep it and they rip it and half the time it's an expensive card or something. <laughs> well, it sounds like we got the second, the potentially second most entertaining video for my channel. Second only to my drunk dumbass reviewing comics with my brother and embarrassing it's, myself. Yeah, no way it'll be more entertaining than that. It was, uh, it's embarrassing, but I'm not taking it down. It's up there for all time. I committed to the idea. I'm sticking to it. That was something else, man. That was something else. Like I said, I don't think that'll ever happen again. I got it out of my system. I had this great idea. We're going to do this. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, that was something else. That was hilarious. Mark saying to someone saying, damn you, I'm hardcore collecting Savage Sword right now. And Daniel Goodwin says, we need to take bets on how many Liefeld books Jess has in there. I <laughs> would piss myself laughing if there was like a load of like Rob Liefeld Youngbloods or something. <laughs> oh. I will laugh too. Oh, that'd be great. The two best possible outcomes is it's a bunch of Liefeld books or a box of like really gross porn. You're like, <laughs> oh God, 
I don't know, why am I even touching these? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly what I was going to say. Like this unboxing is going to turn into a live burning. <laughs> and then a sanitizing of your hands. Like, I don't know where these are. That's true. Yeah, There's that's... Courtney. It was comics and DVDs is what he said there was. So we'll, that's all I know. Okay. I think he would know. I think yeah. He would know. But, you know, maybe he's trying to trick me. Maybe he's in on it. Right? He's like, I can't wait for it to open that up. She'll release the plague upon the planet. <laughs> it just, uh, Courtney just joined up. That's what, I see that. I yeah. said hi. Oh, I missed it. You were talking over me, so you didn't hear it. Uh, I was mansplaining to you. You were mansplaining somehow. Ladies, mansplaining means man explaining. You sent that to me like twice, by the way. It's funny as hell. I saw it on a meme and I laughed for days. And you done the. I always look for an Skeletor one you always send. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one that I saw it on. It's perfect. Oh my gosh. So, Courtney, if you just joined up, you didn't catch it. Jessica's got a random ass box of comics in her <laughs> the top of her garage, telling me about for weeks. And we've decided that she's gonna, we're gonna, next time we do a live, she's gonna have to have it pulled down so she can go through it live on camera so we can see what the hell's in there. And we're taking bets on whether it's trashy comics or porn or a plague upon the earth. Who knows? And if that's not interesting, I might unveil the large ass canvas they left that they stapled a tarp around it. What would be like a lost like Picasso painting or some shit worth millions of dollars? Oh my gosh. <gasps> what if I live in the house that's owned by the people who did the Gardner Museum heist. There you go. And that happened what if? I was born. What would be the chances? I mean, it's it might be unlikely, but the chances are never zero. It's <laughs> possible. That's the truth. That's the truth. Chances are never zero. I was supposed to draw scars on this dad's arm. I'm going to have to look at what scars look like. I don't know how to replicate scars. Like just like a wound that's just scarred over and. Yeah. He's supposed to have war wounds and I'm, I don't know. I'm, I, I think I'm gonna have to do some more research on before I draw them because I looked the last time I did some and I was really struggling trying to replicate them and not have them look stupid. Like his arm looks like a piece of bread that's just got like cuts in it or something. <laughs> I would just say, ideally, probably keep it subtle, like a faint kind of line. And then I would assume the wording would tell, you know, like, you know, this guy has scars on his arm. So they read it and then they look and they see a little mark on his arm and go, okay, that's what those are. But I wouldn't over render it. Yeah, you know, that's fair. Like, like that. That's if I had to give advice, which you did not ask me for, but I did anyway. No, I was asking. I was asking. I'm like, I don't know what to oh, do. All right. <laughs> Courtney yeah. says you just got done carving pumpkins. Oh, good times. I've literally never done that in my life. What? I told you, I grew up with psychotic Jehovah's Witnesses, so we never did anything awesome. Oh, we had this conversation. I, I, I know. Bring it back up. Carving pumpkins is really, really fun. I don't personally ever carve the pumpkins, but I always do all this drawing on them. And then everybody else carves them. So I just ask everybody what they want. And that sounds like a fun version of that. Like, yeah, yeah I'll draw it. Want me to carve on here some big old bosoms? All right, done. Nobody, no, asked um, no one asked for that. <laughs> <laughs> that on. is not one that they typically, you know. 
I know. It's usually me wanting a ghost. Uh, Daniel Goodwin throws out a good question, Jess. Is this stuff going to be colored or is it going to stay black and white? Okay, so it is going to be black and white mostly. However, he has requested, and I told, this is what I told him. I told him that I personally don't think I should do the coloring. I think he should have somebody put it. I don't know. I think it should be done digitally. But he wants me to just take some watercolor and do like the background really light blue in this one to show that it's cold outside. And then in some of them just to like have like just her eyes colored. And then in this one kind of like, he kind of wants a black and white with just color pops here and there. Okay. So. He, he was just saying, like, and it makes sense, like, if it's going to be colored, then the coloring could show the scarring, help, like, make it pop. And and that makes a lot of sense if it was going to be full color. But if that's okay, the that's the point. Then... I hadn't thought about that, but I could, that's true. I could use the color to try to make the scars more visible. Right. See? That's a good point. And I, yeah, I had not thought about it at all. It's a good thing to have a, a room full of artists and ask artistic questions. How do you solve this problem? Somebody might have an answer. It's true, though. I always think, well, if I ask this in here, like pretty much everybody on here is an artist, I feel like. And so they can tell me. And most or if they're not an artist, they've looked at a lot of artwork and so could offer up some, you know. Right. No, agreed, agreed. All right, I don't want to kiss my own ass, but I'm kind of liking the rubble I've drawn here. Does that make me sound like an egotistical prick? No, it is you cool. sure. Well, you kind of always sound that way, to be fair. <laughs> you just are that, Rob. So we're just used to it and we just kind of roll our eyes and move on. Yeah. Oh, what would I do without your support? I'm always super supportive. <laughs> Yeah. Well, like you were saying last time, uh, when we were talking about having Courtney fill in for you, when you're going to be, you know, having your baby, you're like, Courtney, you got to call Rob out on his shit. It's true, though, you do. Because Rob needs it, because Rob is a chuckle head. A little bit. <laughs> so I can't insult myself, but you can throw them at me, and that's okay. Yes, because everybody knows me. Yes. <laughs> Fair. Fair. But when you say it, I think it's pretty obvious you're not joking. Well. So, it's different. I think a little self-depreciating humor keeps you humble a little bit. Is that what it does? Yeah, you should try it for once. <laughs> what? Like, did you just, did you just insult me, I think? <laughs> Motherfucker. Yeah. You know what? I'm getting off here right now. I'm just kidding. You're like, you know what? I'm too pregnant for this shit. Yeah. I don't need to hear your bullshit any longer. Like, I'm surrounded with people giving me shit all goddamn day. Why ain't that the truth? <laughs> I'm struggling with this. I have to keep moving the page around so I don't dip my hand in the ink. And I'm like, I can't ink this part until it dries. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I guess I could move on to a whole other part of the page. Let's start inking some E-Man hair. Let's do it. Got to go for the long stroke. You know what I'm saying? Yeet. Mm hmm Stop it. <laughs> what did I say? I 
I said nothing. Right. Hmm. You know what's ironic is I sit here and I throw these long lines and I'm like, I can just see everything that's wrong with them. But if I were to show these to like 20 year old me, I'd think I was a freaking professional artist wondering how the hell you do it. Oh, I know. I know. You know, that whole, like, it's never good enough. But if younger me could see like how, cause I couldn't figure out how, I'm not saying I'm doing these any good, but. There was a time like, how the hell do they get these lines? I don't get it. It's horse shit. Bye, Courtney. Oh, she's back up. She has to drive home, she says. Oh, all right. Maybe I just saw that myself. Sorry if everybody else saw that. And I'm like, yeah, that was a million years ago. Ten minutes ago. She's already in her car. <laughs> yeah. My bad. Yeah, it's true. Although, I will say, sometimes I look back, I think teenager me was better at art sometimes. <laughs> were you as self-critical of your artwork when you were younger teenage you? Or less, more so or less so than you are now? I mean, I always think everything I do is shit. So, like, honestly, I felt that way as a teenager, too. I just look, I have some of my old stuff. Like, I don't know if I could replicate that today. I did draw more. I mean, I was constantly, I was, if I wasn't drawing, I was writing. To be fair. Well, my problem is when I was younger, I thought the stuff I was doing was genius. And uh, I, I just couldn't see it for how bad it was. So there was times when I was a teenager, I had a little bit of an ego about it. Really? Yeah, I know. Hard to believe, right? <laughs> I don't think you're egotistical. I just make jokes because you say that about yourself. Uh, I care less about the outcome when I was 18. So I think I look, I took bigger chances with my pose at the time. Oh, that's interesting. Um, for and that then I get like the youthful energy, just like, just, I'm going to throw down whatever and not be concerned about it. Sometimes, even though that if the drawing is not technically good, but like there's a youthful energy to it that as you refine your skills, you lose that. And so like you gain something, but you lose something. Yeah. I could definitely see that. Mark says, I envy your inking skills. I tried it for my comic and I'm terrible at it. You know, it's, I don't know how these professional artists, I mean, I was going to say, I don't know how they do. I mean, I do know how they do it. They practice, 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 but I've been trying to get some crisp inking lines mastered for as long as I've been drawing comics and, I'm closer than I've ever been, but I'm still not anywhere near what I wish I was doing. It's such a crazy art form that the thing is, is like, if you have bad pencils, good inking cannot save bad penciling. But if you have good pencils, you can fuck the drawing up beyond all description with bad inking. Um, there's this guy that I am sort of kind of online friends with on Facebook. He's this old guy. He's in his sixties or something like that. And he's an inker. He does everything by hand and it's horrible. It's horrible, but he loves to do it. And he gets a lot of like positive feedback, but I'm like, I'm just looking at it. I'm going, it's such a smudgy, unclear mess. It's, I feel really bad because he's like, Hey Rob, what do you think of this? And I'm like, Oh, it's looking great. That sounds but like what do I do? <laughs> it's it what? It sounds like you're talking about my inking. You don't have to pretend like it's an old man. You can be honest with me. She saw through my deception. <laughs> I was trying to 
subtly explain to her she just needs to give it up. You always say it's all blotchy and terrible. Yes, I have never said that shit to you. I've thought it, but I've never <laughs> said it. <laughs> yes. You now mother motherfucker again. <laughs> right? Now we're right back there. I know, I know. Oh, but see, man. the difference is between this older guy that I'm talking about is he's been doing it for years and years and years, and he's never changed. His artwork has not progressed one iota, and he just doesn't seem like he teaches like an art inking class. I'm like, oh, my Lord, God help me. I see dramatic changes in your artwork all the time. So you strive and you can see it and you or you know you're improving so it's fine oh i first i didn't realize you were talking to me yeah that's i mean i do i do work on it i feel like some days i or some some phases i'm really really working on it i can even see it myself but you know then i'll go a while and not do anything with it too so i need to stay consistent I, but I think part of it, like us doing these lives all the time where we have to force ourselves to sit down and draw, it's just practice and it's just, it's good for both of us. You know, I think it, it, it shows and I see it in your stuff and I can see it being beneficial to me getting this stuff and getting these ink lines down and just drawing and forcing ourselves to do it. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Agreed. 100%. Definitely makes me have to. That's why I said I was going to do at least some of this, these sketches on here. Because I'm like, well, at least I'm doing that. Yeah. <laughs> they may not be what you want them to be, but at least I'm doing them. You know, it's not right? the worst. I, I will say, like, I complain a lot. But it's like, well, do you not, do you want commissions or don't you? <laughs> it's like, fair enough. But um, I feel like I, you know, I spent a lot of time complaining about it. But it's not the worst, you know. At least it's people. Not landscapes. <laughs> or animals or pet porches. <laughs> yeah, I don't like pet porches. And I'm sorry for anybody I've done a pet porch for. Because I know I can <laughs> It, but you're like she did me a pet portrait and she said it was fun now she's just saying that she hated it you lying i actually bitch. have never lied to anybody and said i thought it was a fun one i purposely have never said that i really have told him like I've, i struggled through this one but i hope you enjoy it and they're like oh it looks great you know they don't care you're like i almost crumbled it up and threw it in the fucking garbage and gave it your money back but there you go whatever Remember the one where she had the picture and it was so pixelated of the dog that had passed away and they had a, a cigar shaped dog tree in its mouth. So it looked like it was smoking a cigar and she wanted that exact picture. Do you remember that one? Um, I think so. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Now that you say that I do. Yes. <sighs> remember when I was like, how does this look? And you're like, I know you want me to say that it looks done, but it doesn't. And I was like, damn it. Oh, that's right. I do remember that. Yeah. You're like, I it, you out. I'm like, not finished. <laughs> you're like, you need to, you need to do more. It's so, it's just, you're right. I mean, and I, I did, and it looked so much better and she loved it. She just loved it. And, she gave it to her boyfriend, and it was his old dog that had died, and I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, they were so happy with it, and I, I'm glad that it brought some joy to some people. So there you go; it's all worth it. <sighs> yes, mm. that's true. I also will say yeah, that I... Painting. I feel like painting to me is so much easier than sitting down and, and sketching. Like I look at your sketches for your book that you do and all of the detail that has to go in it, all the different poses, all the different facial expressions, um, the different 
poses that you do so that you're not doing the same one when they're talking. So you switch it up and I'm like, wow, that would just, to me, that would take so much work and it's, you know. And it is the, the, the part of the job that takes the longest, but once you get past that, then you've already worked out the, the storytelling. Then you can sit down and just reproduce from your thumbnail sketches to the big thing. So I've talked about that where that's, if I seem like I'm fast, that's why I've, I've done all the hard work in advance. And then I can just sit down and do the fun shit. Yeah. I get you. I get you. Were you uh, jealous of that meal I sent you a picture of that me and Danielle made the other day? I was. It looked, it looked pretty good. The bacon especially looked really good. BLTs with lobster and onion and egg, like a fried egg on it. And you guys want to oh. know what he did? He sent me pictures and he didn't even ask if I wanted any. And That's I, true. I did not. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm a son of a bitch. That's what it is. A motherfucker. Uh, by the way, I finished my 24 hour. Well, it took me 60 hours. <laughs> oh, wow. That's awesome. Though. Well, when are you going to get that thing up somewhere where we can see it, sir? For real. Right. You can't tell me you did a 24-hour comic in 60 hours and then not let me see it at some point. Did you guys do that I also one? have... <laughs> it's funny how we're both quiet and then we both start at the same time. <laughs> Go ahead. I was going to say... That that guy that did that um, that pencil drawing of fist that I inked, remember that? His name's Jeff. You remember that drawing that I did? Oh, I won't forget or that. that. He did. Um, we have plans to do a live next Friday where, um, well, it's one of two things. We're gonna do a drawing, um, but then I also kind of threw out the idea of like I wanted to like do a page by page walkthrough of my first issue of the He Man comic and hear from someone like a, I hate to say fan but whatever you know a guy who's read it and like I want his perspective on it just to talk about it. I'm curious to get like what did you think about this book so that if it doesn't sound too lame I think that's something we're going to do maybe next Friday where we sit down and just kind of go through it page by page because I want to hear what he thinks about it when he saw it the first time when he read it and have somebody ask me questions about it like what did you mean this or how did you come up with this or something like that I'm like I'm kind of excited to do that that would be really cool. I, I, that's some of the best, in my opinion, some of the best uh, work I've seen. You know, I guess I would say amateur, but it just doesn't look amateur at all. Well, it, I mean, it does to me because it's so old. Almost all the artwork in that book one is, you know, a decade at minimum, maybe. Um, maybe more. Well, I mean the fist that he did. Oh. Yeah. But I don't think your book... Look okay, but I will say this. Actually, speaking of that, it's interesting going through your books. I have everyone but the last one. And seeing your art develop. Speaking of that because we were just talking about that yeah you really 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 have developed a ton since then for sure well i hope so um my plan is to get you that copy of your book in the mail this week i've got two other sets to get in the mail for some 
uh, some other people. So I'm going to get that in there for you as well. I just might need you to uh, message me your address because I know I had it somewhere, but I don't know where it's at. So see, this is you want to call me a shitty person. <laughs> Why would I need your address? On? Something I'm always like, like I'm out. You send me your address. You live like. You live like an hour and a half away from me. It's not like I'm ever going to like, hey, I'm not going to just drop by. Okay, fair enough. And I can't remember yours, so. Fair enough. Hey, sucker. I'm always like, what is your address again? And I need to send you stuff too, so. Well. Uh, I can't talk. Yeah. But yeah, I want to get that book in your hand so you can read it and then you can tell me now that you have get to read the story in its entirety, you've known the basics for a long time, but I want to hear your feedback on it, like what you think about now that you get to read it and it's like the fullness of it, you know what I mean? Get to experience right. what it is. And I so. want, I, I'll be honest, I'm interested because I really liked the, the art that you did in that one a lot. Like I remember seeing different panels and some of the different techniques I feel like you didn't apply to your other books just different inking techniques and styles so I'm excited probably true like some of like the detail work you did to make the walls not just oh this is just a plain ass wall like no it's got brick and stone or you know stuff like that yeah Yeah, Mark says, um, yes, there is a huge difference between the first book and the last. So much improvement. Oh, and if we're talking about my stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, like I said, um, I mean, I think that's I did those pages when I <laughs> I did those pages uh, for the first book, like I started them right around the time I when I before I was even married to my wife. And that was, um, God, let me think, 10, 11, 12, 13. It might be 15 years ago that I started those first pages. Now, in book number one, I did redraw a couple of pages in the first chapter because they're, the first page, they were just too bad. Like the opening page with Skeletor sitting in his throne, that is a redraw that I did just a couple years ago as opposed to the original one I did 15 years ago. But uh, most of it is just the original that I did. And there's enough of it. It's like, I'm not, I don't hate it all. You know, there's enough of it that I feel like I did okay enough that I'm happy to just let it go, even though I would do better now. Um, I feel like I was really, I feel like I was inspired and it was just kind of working. So it's, it's kind of nice to be able to look at it and go, I might do better now, but I still, I don't hate it. Yeah. And uh, I was visiting my uh, my brother John, who's been on the channel several times, and we were talking about we've we've been talking about this forever. It's just about finding the right time. Is to we want to collect the first three books into one big collected book with like a shiny foil metal cover and all this kind of cool shit like that. But we're also talking about what can we add to it to make it worth somebody picking it up for you know adding additional content to it. Um. Because you don't want to ask somebody to buy the second, the same thing twice, right? So I don't know. We, we're kind of debating that back and forth on what we're gonna do. I mean, you could just do extra art in it, or write a couple of other chapters, just side stories or something, if you really wanted to. <laughs> I've thought about that, but part of the problem is is that it's already going to be a very thick book with a huge page count. And the higher the page count, the more it costs to print. So therefore, the more expensive it makes to get into people's hands. So, you know, I definitely want to add some extra stuff, but not go overboard. Yeah, um, it's a balance. I'll have to see what turns out to be the best idea. Um, yeah. I gotcha. Are you uh, moving on to a new page now? 
Yeah, just because I don't want to do too much detail on it. I'm just going to send him what I've got on these, like, rough, rough sketches before I sit down. And... Sorry. Yeah. Screen. So. Yeah, moving on a little bit. <laughs> I think I've had enough of this shit. I don't want to say that, but yes. <laughs> that being said... I'm the worst. I should be grateful, I know. Really should, but... I'm a like that sometimes. <laughs> Big complainy pants. Right? I'm getting sick of it. You get sick of my complaining? No, nah, I'm just kidding. Mm. Can I, I don't think you are, asshole. My internet must be like going in and out. Definitely having some issues. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. I feel like you just, you're so fast at inking. You're so, you really have just gotten really good at it. I'm excited to see how this one goes for sure. Did you end up going to a corn maze this weekend? I did. I, uh, I actually forgot to post some uh, pictures of it, but, um, it was pretty fun. Uh, I haven't been to one. I took my kids to one, um, not last year, but the year before, and it's where my little boy wanted to go through the haunted house there, because we'd gone through it once when it was daylight and they had the lights on and no actors in there. But then we were all going to go through it all as adults. We're going to go through it again, and he's like, "Daddy, I want to go." And he was like six. I'm like, "I don't know. It's going to be scary." He's like, "No, Daddy, it's not. I want to go." I'm like, "Okay," and it scared the ever living fucking piss out of him. <laughs> Like, I've got a picture on my phone still of this scared-ass look on his face. He wanted out of there so fast. But, like, we can't get out. We're in the middle of this thing. So you got to ride it out, you little turd. So let's go. And he just ended up burying his face, you know, <laughs> in, in, someone, in one of my uh, friends that were with us, like, burying his face in her shirt. So he didn't have to see any of the horrors. <laughs> And I'm like, he's going to go home and have nightmares and his mom's going to be pissed. You're like, the fuck did you do to him? Like, I didn't do anything. I took him to a haunted house. What do you want? He wanted to go. It's that time of year. Right? This is what we do. This is where we scare the shit out of our children for, you know, entertainment. But then we're mad later because they uh, want to come sleep in your bed or some bullshit. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> Like, no, get out. That's so true. You're not wrong. But yeah, it was fun. There was the part where we uh, got to get on, like, this tractor was pulling this wagon behind it with this big long bench and seats, and they dragged us to the other end of the cornfield where we start the maze, and my my little friend that I was with, you know, it 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 bordered on being a kind of a cute little like cutesy moment. The old wagon hay wagon ride, huh? Yeah, exactly, that's what it was. Yeah, and it's like because it was dark, we got away from the lights and everything, and so it was just a dark sky and the moon's up there bright, and it's like, oh, this is kind of like a moment here. Uh -huh. So cute, it makes me want to puke. I don't even want to tell you how much I paid for those stupid wagon rides this just this year. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Having a shit ton of children. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was ridiculous. Because we've been to, like, I don't know, three now? Three different places? Oh, really? You guys are going all out. 
Yeah, okay, okay. You want to hear why? I think we had a discussion last time. I can't see the chat, by the way. My um, everything's disconnected. I can tell that my internet's gone down. So, um, just so you know. But um, it's. I think we talked about this last time. Like we can't find a corn maze. We couldn't find a corn maze, and we thought that a couple of these had corn mazes. So we're like, okay, we'll you know throw another. Seventy dollars at this this one and go in. Nope, no corn maze nope. here. So the next one we would do, you know, it just is what it is, I guess. But I am wagon road out seeing goats. I'm done. <laughs> I'm matched <laughs> out. I'm ready for Christmas. <laughs> had enough of this mm-hmm. but I'm glad you got to go because you were saying you hadn't gotten to do that this year yeah well one of my friends who I used to work with another lady um, one of my former bosses and she's quit we ended up being really close friends anyway and so she showed up with one of her guy friends and um, we just called those two and then me and my friend we just kind of hung out and ate some you know, concessions and walked around and saw all the goats and animals and shit. And no one believed there, there was goats, those black, they're like black goats with like the little Satan horns. I'm like, look, it's the devil goats. And everyone's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm like the, the, the goats that look like the devil, with the, the little Satan horns. Does anybody know that devil represented by a black goat? Am I the only one who understands this? And they thought I was crazy. What? That's very much a, thing it, it is right yeah it is i'm like these are like little devil goats and i ain't gonna go touch them probably curse me or some <laughs> old devil goats yeah that's that's a that's a thing oh man i know i might have to get off here i am um... Definitely running out of steam. <laughs> yeah. I know what that's like. So, do we want to plan again for a Thursday one, right? Yeah, well, I'm I'm down for that myself. I mean, and again, we we're putting a little pressure on you to. Uh, you know, represent. Yeah, I know. Dude. We'll, we'll, I'll get it down. We'll see what's in there. All right, I remember, we got to unboxing on camera. Right? If it, I open the lid on camera and it is not anything exciting, we're blaming my husband. <laughs> That's fair. He don't know. He don't need to know. Or the owners who left this crap here and couldn't even leave something interesting. So. Right. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) Someone someone says, I got up for some water and suddenly there's a discussion about devil goats. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the transition was abrupt, but uh, (laughs) funny. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. And you see this black goat. It's like I've told you, there's that 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 witch movie that I keep telling you, you need to watch for Halloween. But in it, they have a black goat. His name is Black Philip, and he's literally the devil, and he's horrible, and he's scary, and that's all I see. It's a thing. It's like a thing. I've I've definitely studied uh, my fair share of Wicca, and it's a thing. So. You're not wrong, Rob. Thank you. Uh, Finally, I got some validation. I will validate you in this thing. One hundred percent. Awesome. Thank you. (laughs) Man, these throwing a lot of ink lines here, trying to get these sharp, crisp. 
I don't know. It's kind of working. Let's see. I can't see. Oh, I got to look on my phone here because my computer is all like, oh, we have no internet. It looks good. Oh, it looks good. All right. It'll end up Mark is saying, notify us when the unboxing is happening. So, Jessica. Okay. I'm, I'm just repeating myself. This is on you. Okay. Hey, my gosh. <laughs> just burning it into you. And Mark's asking, we're talking about The Witch. That's on my two-watch list. Wiley J. Jaw says, The Witch is the best horror movie in years. It is. It was very, like, the atmosphere is so intense and moody. Like, it's not jump scare, like, stupid shit. It's like, I'm legitimately terrified about what the hell ever else is about to happen in this story. I don't know what's going on. I feel like I shouldn't be watching this. Did you feel like the devil was sitting next to you? Kind of. And I'm kind of fine with that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm kind of fine with that. Oh my god, that's hilarious. <sighs> that's hilarious. Oh boy. Well, I might have to watch it at some point then. Although I don't know if I really want <laughs> Feel that way or not, you know? Someone saying says, I'm not scared of ghosts. They like to bounce. And anything that reminds me of Tigger is A-OK -okay in my book. That's fair. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. And Mr. J Ultra says, I've seen this one movie where a couple of a uh, couple on a farm raise a goat as their child. They killed the mother goat, and the ending honestly disturbed me. I don't know what hell messed up movie you're watching, sir. Yeah, I'm like wondering what this is. <laughs> I know, right? Send me a link, sir. <laughs> links or it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. We need links to this film. All right. Mm -hmm. well, I feel like I've got a decent on this. If you're uh, needing to dip out here shortly. I probably should. I probably should. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's plan on, we'll plan on Thursday for the unboxing. If you want, we could do like another live too this week. Tuesdays I can't. Wednesdays I can. Technically tomorrow I could too if it was late. But I have to do later ones sometimes. So that's the only problem. Um, and you know the, the whole uh, the unboxing thing doesn't necessarily have to take up all the time. You know what I mean? I mean maybe I don't know. Maybe it will. If you unleash the plague yeah. on the planet then Unless it's just something super fabulous in there, but I mean, right. no, I, I'm sure it will not, but I was just saying that there's, if you want to do more, I know that I'm always up for it. I just don't always have the best like time frames in with your schedule. No, nope, it'll be fine. We can, I'm always up for it. So yeah. we'll work it out. All right, sweet. Sounds good to me. Sounds like a plan. All right. Well, thanks for chit chatting, and your stuff is looking amazing, of course. Oh, shut your mouth. Mm, wow. I'll try to give you a compliment. That was rude. <laughs> yeah. Rude ass. It's looking like. <laughs> Yeah, no. it looks like shit, Rob. Now it looks. You should give give it up. I just realize my shape on this swing is. Horrible. Oh, anyways, it's fine. It's fine. Fine. All right. Well, I guess that'll be good enough for now. And, All right. Um, Sounds good. Well, thanks for everybody watching, and thanks for hanging out, Rob. And we will. Yep.
for at least Thursday for the unbox. Yep. <laughs> yep. We're we're excited for that. I'll uh I'll find some picture of like a scary looking crate on Google and I'll put that up like a mystery unboxing I for the next Thursday. People in and then you have like a cheap ass like just plastic crate of porn and it's all like we said it's all that's going to be in there right. rubber made i mean <laughs> yeah it'll be rubber made but uh, i'll make it look really nice and creepy yeah. all right that sounds like a plan I'm excited for that one <laughs> okay sounds good all right guys thanks for joining we'll see you next time bye